So we've all seen this historic speech. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. This speech was nearly one year after Alan Shepard launched into space for the first time in 1961 on the Freedom 7. And to the Americans, this was a defeat because the first Russian astronaut had launched just weeks before. And so, after the speech, the Apollo program was formed and the first space race began. The Apollo program began with AS-201, which was the first uncrewed flight of the Saturn IB launch vehicle. After a few more test flights, the tragedy of Apollo 1 happened and we lost three astronauts. Yet, America continued launching the uncrewed Apollo 4, the first flight of the Saturn V. Then, nearly a year later, Apollo 7. They launched the Saturn IB, it was crewed, and it was the first televised broadcast of a launch. And then, Apollo 11. The first human mission to land on the moon. Coming down. There he is. Yeah. There's a foot coming down the steps. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. Pretty good little jump. So there's a foot on the moon, stepping down on the moon. And so we did it. The footprint and, of course, the flag on the moon. The Apollo program ended after 17 missions, and America could say that we won the space race, or at least the parts that mattered to us. Ah, uh, but at what cost? No, really, what cost? Because after bunny hopping and taking lunar samples, we put 12 people on the moon and 24 people in lunar orbit. The Apollo program cost around $28 billion at the time, and inflation adjusted for 2020, that's $283 billion. Now, of course, there were upfront costs to develop new technology, and this is a rough calculation, but that's $11.8 billion per astronaut. Now, don't get me wrong, this shot was definitely worth billions of dollars, but bunny hopping in lunar samples, maybe less so. And so, since this astronaut standing there isn't producing millions of dollars of value per second, we packed it up, and we haven't visited the moon for 45 years. But the expense isn't surprising. The Apollo program was meant to get us there as quickly as possible, not as cheaply as possible. After each launch, the Saturn V rocket would be recovered from the ocean, but not reusable. And these beautiful Rocketdyne F1 engines would be left at the bottom of the ocean until Jeff Bezos actually went on an expedition to recover them. And with no path towards cheaper, more sustainable, profitable launch, our dreams of living on the moon slowly faded into a nostalgic retro sci-fi. In the 80s, the space shuttle was an attempt at a more sustainable system by landing the space shuttle. But even after refurbishment of the space shuttle, each launch cost around $450 million and the dollars per kilogram to low Earth orbit was $16,000. Beale Aerospace was one of the most infamous attempts at a private launch vehicle, but the founder ended up losing a ton of money on this and they closed operations after less than three years. And thus began the saying that the best way to become a millionaire in the space industry was to be a billionaire first. Around the same time, Elon Musk was working on PayPal and it eventually sold to eBay and he made $165 million. He ended up buying the same test area that Beale Aerospace had previously used. And eventually, on the fourth launch of the Falcon 1 rocket, SpaceX made it to orbit with a block of cheese as their payload. Then came the sustainability with the grasshopper attempts to practice Every space rocket. expert was just completely doubting that it would ever work. I remember watching these when I wasn't paying attention to lectures, and uh, it just felt like the future. It was amazing to watch. But of course, years later, they landed on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and history was made. They were able to launch a reused Falcon 9 for around $50 million, and the dollars per kilogram to low Earth orbit was around 2000 now. This is, of course, a much better price than the space shuttle, the Apollo missions, or anything that came before it. Here's a graph of the cost decline, and you can see the significant drop when SpaceX started landing rockets. And of course, since they're a private company that wants to make money and stay in business, they have even more plans. 
The total launch market might cap out at around $6 billion annually, but Internet Satellite could be worth $50 billion annually, and this is their Starlink project. And of course, Starship is being built to get launch prices into the hundreds of dollars per kilograms, with the goal of being mass manufactured so we can send fleets of them to the moon and to Mars and beyond. And this is why the Crew Dragon launch is so exciting to me. It means sending astronauts not for $11.8 billion, but for millions of dollars and again and again and again. Anyways, for more videos, please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I just dropped some merch, so go check it out, even if just to check out that sick Photoshop. As of the time of posting, the Crew Dragon hasn't launched yet, so best of luck to everyone involved, and I'll see you in the future.